two time we have, let us hit the road and start running. Praise the Lord. I always say that when you are coming to church, there are five things that you must come with. Praise the Lord. First, your heart, your Bible, and your companion. Praise the Lord. The daily dose, the daily dose of spiritual vitamins is our Bible companion. Don't ever come to church without it. That is the second thing. The third one is your notepad. The fourth one is your biro. And the fifth one is your offering. Praise the Lord. Each item carries 20 marks. Congratulations to those of you that score 100%. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> so if you do not score 100% today, make sure next time you score 100%. Because it's only 100% that is good enough for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. This evening, I want to talk about the topic I've titled is that we need to do more. We need to do more. Tell your neighbor you need to do more. You can do more than you are doing now. You have the grace to do much, much more. After today, begin to do more because you have the ability. Put your hand together for Jesus. Because he's going to help us to do more from this night. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody came to his pastor and said, Pastor, it's not good that once I give my life to Christ, it's not better for me to just go to heaven now that I've given my life to Christ because I don't want to remain here and be polluted. The pastor looked at him and said, what you said is good, but let me ask you a question. The person that preached to you and you got converted, if the person has prayed the same prayer, where will you be? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That means we are here for a purpose. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord has kept us here for a purpose. He did not just create us for creating us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight, God is going to do much for us. But quickly, there are Bible passages I've written here, and I want you to take it down because time may not permit us to read all. So that when you get home, you can start reading them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, sorry, if you have your Bible and your book, I, I believe you have it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 to 25. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4, 20 to 22. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. I'm running too fast, right? Okay, I'm sorry for that. Deuteronomy 6, 1 to 25. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Deuteronomy 32, 47. Isaiah 34, 16. Colossians 3, 16. Isaiah 34, 16. Colossians 3, 16. Isaiah 40, verse 8. Yes, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. Luke 8.38 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And 2 Corinthians 9.7 Make sure you read all those Bibles. Praise the Lord. And meditate upon them. Amen. I've done that because I know that many of us we don't read our Bibles. So I'm just trying to help you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm just trying to help you. So make sure you read those scriptures. Praise the Lord. Now, the question that that brother asked the pastor, he thinks that once he's saved, that is all. There is nothing for him to do again. No. Why did God create us first? We must understand why God created us. Praise the Lord. And if you turn with me, to the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 11. If you have your Bible, which I believe you do, Revelation, chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, 
For thou hast created all things. For thy pleasure they are and were created. Praise the Lord. King James Version. He said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive all glory. Because you have created all things for yourself. And for your pleasure, they were created. Praise the Lord. That tells us that God created us for himself. Before a product is manufactured, the need, the purpose, the function of that product is first determined before the product is manufactured. Praise the Lord. Before a manufacturer will decide, okay, I want to manufacture this, he will first of all think, what do I want to achieve with this production? Once he's able to come up with, okay, this production, wanted fellowship with us. That is the reason why he created us. So he didn't create us just for us to satisfy ourselves. That is, big, that is where we must start from. God, and you have already given your life to Christ, and you are here seated as a child of God. That is why the title says, We need to do more. place right now. We, cannot, we will not have all the people that are in church because somebody goes out and talks to somebody. The person is already in the church. Somebody is bringing his finances to finance the gospel. Somebody is counseling someone. Somebody is doing one good to another. But we can do more. Praise the Lord. Because the God that created us is not limited. Because it is God that is causing us to be able to do what we want to do. The Bible says it is God that is at work in you, both to will and to do according to his purpose. Praise the Lord. So that God is not limited. And if we, re if we depend on that God and we allow that God to use us, there is no limit to which he can do in our lives. Because God has so much to be done. Praise the Lord. 
Bible says that in John 3, 6, 7, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the plan of God is that everyone that Jesus Christ died for must be saved. Praise the Lord. And that's our prayer. That for everyone that Jesus Christ died for, we be saved in Jesus' name. And God is going to use you, he's going to use me as we give ourselves. Praise the Lord. So when you give your life to Christ, God enlisted you into the workforce. You are drafted into the workforce that is going on right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank God that you are already born again. Praise the Lord. And because you are born again, you are already enlisted for God. Praise the Lord. It is not what we want to do for God, but it is what God wants to use us for that matter. Praise the Lord. Some people say, I would like to do this for God. I would like to do that for God. God is already at work. Amen. Amen. It's what God is already at work. At work. We're, only, we're only enlisted into the workforce of God. Amen. Amen. And then, for us to come, we must be born again. Because it is a work of righteousness. It is sin. In the, it is even sin that created the problem. So, for the, for, the, for the problem of sin to be settled, the same people that are coming to carry that message must not be victim of that sin. Praise the Lord. Amen. As I was saying before, that there is need for us to do more because God has really empowered us to do more. Because we are not doing anything by our own ability or strength. It is by the power of God that we are able to function. Praise the Lord. So the more we surrender ourselves to God, the more of his ability that is given to us to be able to do more. Praise the Lord. And I will tell you that for us, there is always a starting point. We must give ourselves to Christ. And once we are already in Christ, we are enlisted into the workforce of God. And I also said that it is not what we choose to do or we love to do, but it is what God wants to use us for. Because it is God that is actually using us for his own purpose. Praise the Lord. It's not the other way around. Amen. We are not the one working for God. It is God that is working through us. Praise the Lord. Do you understand it now? We are not the one working for God, but it is God that is working through us. Is using us for his own purpose. And if God is one that is using us, then we must come to God at his own time. Praise the Lord. Not the way we want it, but the way God wants it. He dictates. He tells us the condition that we must meet. Praise the Lord. That's why we must come to him. Praise the Lord. The pro- this is the process. We must come to him and then we surrender ourselves to him completely. And then when we surrender ourselves to him, then God can now take us and mold us and shape us and make us fit for what he wants us to do. Praise the Lord. This is where the problem is. We want to do it our own way. We want to come to God at our own time. We want to come to God at the time that we like. And we, want, we choose the way that God should use us. What God can do through us, what God should not do, what we must give to God, what God must not demand from us, it is not so. Praise the Lord. If you are ready, you must come to him completely. Praise the Lord. We come to God and we tell God, God, take me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then we say, break God, break me. Praise the Lord. Then we tell him, mold me. Then we say, use me. But most of the time, we dodge, praise the Lord. We jump the, the second part and the third part. We just come to God and say, God, take me. Use me. It's not like that. We don't want you to break us. We don't want you to mold us because we enjoy the way we are. We enjoy those things that we are doing. We think that we, we, we like it when we can come to God at our own time. When we are the one dictating to God, it's not like that. God is not going to use us this day because he knows what he wants to use us for. He knows the condition that we must meet to be fit for that work. So we must do our part by surrendering to him. Once that is done, praise the Lord. That is why the book of Romans chapter 12, 
verse 1 and 2. What does he say? He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we should do what? Present ourselves as what? As a living sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Present ourselves. We, we must do the presenting. But once we present ourselves, we must allow God to do whatever he wants to do through us. Praise the Lord. Amen. And once we do that, God is able to use us. That is why you say that it's sometimes some of us think that our pastor is so hard when he talks about discipline, when he talks about we must be law abiding until we are abiding, until we, are, until we surrender ourselves, until we allow God to have his way. God can do little or nothing with us. Get it clear. Praise the Lord. As long as you still want your own way, not the way of God, God can do little or nothing with us. So if you, if you really want to be, be useful in God's hand, surrender yourself completely to him because he knows what to do. He created you. He manufactured you. He knows what he has put in you and he knows what he wants to use you for. As you surrender, I pray that God will give you the grace to surrender to Sally tonight in Jesus' name. Because when you do that, you begin to enjoy God. God will begin to use you. And then let me tell you that when God starts using you, God will take care of you. Every farmer takes care of his tools. He preserves it because he knows that tomorrow that tool will see useful to him. Praise the Lord. He will keep you strong. He will keep you wealthy. He will keep you powerful. He will just make sure that you are fit. Praise the Lord. There is nothing that you will need that he will not provide because he knows that tomorrow he will need you. Praise the Lord. Somebody was telling me of a man, somebody who said, who said that if he dies today, it is God that will lose. Ah, some people say this man must be very proud. This man must be very arrogant. Who is he? It's only God that is indispensable. It is true that it's only God that is indispensable. But the work that God has to do on earth is human being that will do it. God cannot do anything on this earth without man without human beings, because he has created the earth for men. Praise the Lord. The planet earth is the place that God has created for human beings to inhabit. And if God must work on this earth, he must use human beings. And if God is going to use human beings, he will need you to make yourself available. And as you make yourself available, God will take you and will use you, and as he's using you, he's blessing you. Praise the Lord. That is why he said that when you serve me, I will do what? I will bless your food, I will bless your bread and your water, and I will take away sickness and infirmity away from you. I will, I will deal with your enemy by myself. Anything that I want to stop you, I will stop that thing because you are useful to God. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us this morning, this evening rather, in Jesus' name. Amen. Because of our time, there are few areas that we need to do more. Praise the Lord. The first area that we need to do more is our relationship with God. Praise the Lord. It's our relationship with God. Who is God to us? How do we see God? How do we see God? God is our Father. Praise the Lord. He's our Creator. He's our Maker. He's the one who created us for Himself. He created us that he can use us. He created us so that we can have fellowship with him. Praise the Lord. If you, if you, if you are the kind of person that you always complain, that you are always bored, you know, you suffer boredom, you are bored, it is because you are not having fellowship with your God. Praise the Lord. It's because you are not engaging in fellowship. There is no way you engage in a fellowship either with somebody or with someone that you'll be bored. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, the reason why God has created us is that we might have fellowship with him. Praise the Lord. There's one thing I'm, I'm very sure that can never happen to me. I can never be bored in life. Do you know why? Because I enjoy fellowship with God and God's people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I used to tell people that most of the time, there are two places that you are likely going to find me. Praise the Lord. Three places. Amen. 
while at home, at work, and at church. These three these are the most these are the three places that you are likely going to find me most of the time. It's either that I'm at home or I'm at work or I'm at in a fellowship with brethren, with the children of God. David said, I was glad when they say, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. He also said that a day in your court is better than 10,000 days elsewhere. Praise the Lord. So I enjoy fellowship with God because that is the reason why God has created us. So God is our Father. We must desire to be with him always. We must desire to fellowship with him always. We must desire to listen to him always. We must desire to obey him always. But how much of God is in us? Praise the Lord. We must believe in him and also believe him. Praise the Lord. Amen. I will say that again. We must believe in God and also believe him. They are not the same thing. Praise the Lord. To believe in God means that you know, you, 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 you accept the fact that God exists. Praise the Lord. That there is a God somewhere. That this earth did not just exist on its own. It must have been created by God. And that God is all powerful. That God can do all things. That God can do this. That God can do that. That is where it ends. But to believe God is to trust him with your life. It's to, it's to believe is what that what he has said concerning you is able to do it. And then it's for you to trust him and hand over your life to him. But 90% of people only believe in God. They don't believe God. That is why we have so much problem in the body of Christ. If every one of us we trust God, if every one of us we read the Bible and believe it and apply it to our lives, our life will never remain the same. Praise the Lord. But what do we do? We believe that God exists. God can bless people, but not me. God can heal people, but not me. God can do this, but not me. We just believe that God can do it for other person, but not us. But when we start believing that God is for me, praise the Lord. God can do for me what he said he can do. And then I can trust him. That is that, is that time that we actually have fellowship with God. How will it look like? If pastor should come to you and say, Brother Michael, tomorrow come to me, I'm going to give you one million naira. Then, yeah. Pastor, don't deceive me, Joe. Ah, I beg. Don't, don't flatter me, Joe. And then you walk away. Praise the Lord. And then they, they now ask you what happened. Say, ah, well, how come? I know pastor can do it, but... I'm not sure he can do it for me. He will do it for me. Praise the Lord. You believe in him, but you don't believe him. That is the difference. Praise the Lord. We must believe God. Amen. That he can do what he says he will do. Praise the Lord. That is why most of the time when we are in a situation, when we are in need, God is not our first point of call. We think about who can help us when we call them and they all fail us, then we remember we have God. Well, what have we done? We only believe in God, but we do not believe him. If you are in need, the first thing you have to do is to go to God because you believe that he can do what he says he will do. Praise the Lord. So we must trust him. Praise the Lord. We must be able to trust our life to him and commit ourselves to him. We need to do more in that aspect. Praise the Lord. Of believing God, that God is faithful. Amen. That he will not lie to us. We need to do more in that aspect. And then desire to have fellowship with him. Desire to obey him. Whatever he says to you, do. That is the secret of living. Praise the Lord. Whatever the word of God, whatever God tells us through his word, is what we must do. God does not owe us anything. Praise the Lord. God is not under obligation to lie to us. After all, can we fight God? Are we more powerful than him? 
If he says he wants to do something and he does not do it, can we take him to any court? Eh? Is there any lawyer that we advocate for us? Uh -huh. Why should he not deceive us? Praise the Lord. It's because he loves us. He has created us for himself. And want to enjoy us. Praise the Lord. Let us start enjoying God. Amen? Let us surrender ourselves to him. Let us allow him the free will, free way in our lives. Let us allow him to have his way. Because the more of God in our lives, the better we will be. Praise the Lord. Amen. We need to do more in the area of God. Being faithful to his word. Loving him. Trusting him. Praise the Lord. Living a life that is sincere before him. Praise the Lord. Some, uh, it's, it's so funny. Amen. That somebody will want to do what is wrong. Amen. And you, you go into your room. Amen. You, you, you switch off the light. You do what you want to do. And you think, because you have hidden yourself in the room, and you switch off the light, God did not see you. It doesn't show you love that God. It doesn't show that you honor him. To those whom we love, we honor them. Praise the Lord. We believe them. Praise the Lord. We trust them. Praise the Lord. We will always want to be with them. That is what God desires from us. From Revelation 4, 11 that we have just read. That he has created us for himself. Praise the Lord. I pray that God will help us to do more in that aspect in the name of Jesus. Amen. To have fellowship with him. Why must we tell you to come to church before you come to church? Why must we tell you to come early before you come early to church? You, do you go to work late? No. Do you go for an appointment? No. If you really love God, then you will honor him with everything that you do. You put him first. God himself will know that I will honor him. God said, I will honor them that honor me. Praise the Lord. Let's start honoring God in our lives. Because we can always do more in that aspect. Amen. 9.30, it's not too early to come to church. Praise the Lord. 5 p.m., it's not too early to come to church if you're at home. Praise the Lord. And then have fellowship with God. Amen. Not just here alone, but have a personal fellowship with God. How do you claim that you love God when you do not have any fellowship with him? When you do not read your Bible? When you do not talk to him? Praise the Lord. I enjoy God always. Amen. I can stay, I can stay in my room. I can stay in one place for one month without going out. I will not miss anything. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because I'll be enjoying God. Moses was with God for 40 days, for 40 nights. Praise the Lord. He did not, when we are with God, time is irrelevant. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you are with God, time is irrelevant. Praise the Lord. Have you ever read a book before that as you, as, as you are reading the book, you are just enjoying each page of it? Praise the Lord. Every page is, is very is sweetening to you. There is a way you enjoy it. Praise the Lord. No, many of us don't read. Okay, let us say film, eh? video, home video. Praise the Lord. The one you are used to. Praise the Lord. Because I know that many of us are not used to reading. God will, God will deliver us after today in Jesus' name. A whole video that you love. Praise the Lord. As they are, as, as they are showing it, it will sweeten you. Praise the Lord. Every scene, you are just enjoying it. As you say, you are just enjoying it. How do you wish? You, you wish that that, that, what, that scenario should do what? Should not end. Am I right? You wish that that scenario should not end. Let it continue to be like that. That is how it is when you are in the presence of God. Every bit of it is sweeter. Praise the Lord. Try it. Tell your neighbor, try it. You will know that I'm telling you the truth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. So, another area that we need to do more is concerning the word of God. Praise the Lord. Concerning the word, the word of God. Amen. The word of God is our life. Praise the Lord. So the, the more of God's word in us, the better for us. Praise the Lord. The word of God is very powerful. Amen. 
Let us read Proverbs chapter 4 very quickly. I want to read from the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. Let's open to it if you have your Bible. We need to do more in the area of the Word of God. How we respond to the Word of God, how we apply the Word of God. He said, my son, pay attention to what I say. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And health to man's whole body. NIV. Praise the Lord. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Are we there? Do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us also read Hebrew 11 verse 3. We are reading it because we want to establish something through the scripture. Praise the Lord. 11 verse 3. It says, By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. NIV. Praise the Lord. God created everything by his word. The word of God has a creative ability. Praise the Lord. If you go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 31, you will discover that anytime God wants something to happen, He will speak. Praise the Lord. He will do what? He will speak. And then for about nine, I think about another 10 or 11 times in Genesis chapter 1, God spoke. Praise the Lord. You can check it out. It was where you say, and God said, and God said, and God said. Each time God says something, something happened. Praise the Lord. Amen. What does that tell you? It tells you that there is power in the word of God. As a matter of fact, until God spoke, nothing happened. Praise the Lord. It also means that until you speak, nothing will happen. Praise the Lord. When I say nothing will happen, nothing good will happen. Praise the Lord. The truth is that, the real truth is that when you, anytime you speak, something happens. Why I said no, nothing happened is because I'm not looking at the negative aspects of the word that we speak. Praise that's when I, that is why I say that until you speak, nothing happens. But the truth is that whenever you speak, something happened. It now depends. What happened is that depends on what you spoke. Praise the Lord. So be careful what you say because you will end end up having it. Are you following me? In this ministry, the word of God is, is what we apply. The word of God. And, and it is called the gospel of what? Gospelology. Praise the Lord. Which is the application of the word of God to manifest what? Divine realities. Praise the Lord. So, we are cheating ourselves when we do not familiarize ourselves with the word of God. Because God himself created the world by his word. And the Hebrew 11 things say that the word was framed by the word of God. And the same word of God is what is sustaining the world. Praise the Lord. If God wants to bring the world to an end, is it going to be by spoken word? Praise the Lord. God said, let the earth began. Praise the Lord. And the earth came. If now God wants to 
end the earth. He will also say what? Let the earth be gone. And it will also be gone. Are you following me now? So there is power in spoken word. There is power in the word of God. So we need to do more about the word of God because the word of God has ability to produce what he talks about. Praise the Lord. When the word of God address a particular situation, divine power is released, thereby causing that situation to align with the word. Praise the Lord. When God said, let there be light, what happened? There was light. You can also do the same thing in your own life. Is there anything in your life now that you do not like? You can speak the word of God to it and something will happen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What I've written here says that he said, when God wanted to create the earth, God did not roll out bulldozers or cranes from heaven. Praise the Lord. God did not say, let us start gathering bulldozers. Praise the Lord. It's not like in Yinafela, if you want to build, it will start beginning to it will call the ground, do everything, dig, um, look for cement, look for blood, look for iron, look for this. No. All that God did was to do what? Speak the word. Amen. And everything came into being. Praise the Lord. That is, that is God for you. Amen. Amen. So what does that tell you? He released his word and by it created the whole earth. Genesis chapter 1. Praise the Lord. God's word is the solution to every challenge. Amen? Amen. It is potent and it is powerful in every situation. Praise the Lord. Everything bow to the word of God. Amen. Every situation bow to the word of God. Nothing can resist the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. This, that is why it is imperative for you as a Christian to study and imbibe God's word. Praise the Lord. For it has the ability to transform your life, to energize you, and to program you for victory and success. Praise the Lord. The word of God can program us for what? For victory and success. That is why it is very, very important that you read the word of God. How come you do not have a Bible? And it does not bother you. How come you can stay a day without reading the word of God? Praise the Lord. Not just reading it, but applying it. We say that God's following is the application of the word of God. Praise the Lord. First of all, you, you have a Bible. You read the word. You study it. You meditate upon it. You ask questions. This word that I've read, what is he asking me to do? What is my responsibility? Praise the Lord. And you take step to do it. And as you take step, you get results. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord is helping us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's very important for you to study the word of God, to have the word of God. For example, if, if you are poor, I'm not saying you are poor, praise the Lord. Nobody is poor here in Jesus' name. Amen. If, someone, okay, let's say, if someone is poor, because there is no poverty in this place, yes. look around you. Do you see poverty around this place? No. no. So nobody is poor. So, but if someone is poor, praise the Lord. And if that person keeps studying and confessing the word of God, something will happen in that person's life. Praise the Lord. The word of God that he's saying will go forth and produce its kind. Are you getting my point? You know every seed produced after its kind. You cannot plant okra and harvest maize. It's not possible. Praise the Lord. So when you speak the word, when you speak, when you locate the scripture, that's why you must have your Bible. So whatever your situation, the answer is this. Locate the word of God that address that situation. Praise the Lord. And begin to apply it. Amen. For example, if somebody is sick and the person decides to go 
and if the person has the headache and decides to go out and buy pain relieving tablets, let's say paracetamol that we are that we are familiar with, praise the Lord. And the person goes to the chemist and asks for paracetamol and he takes it according to the prescription. Praise the Lord. Once that is done, you have done your part. The paracetamol takes take over from there. Once it enters your system, you don't have control over it again. It begins to do work that is, man, that, is, that is fabricated for or produced for. Praise the Lord. The same manner, when there's an area of your life, whether it is sickness, whether it is poverty, whether it is lack of something, whether it's lack of this or that, locate the word of God. Praise the Lord. Whatever we are looking for is in this book. The word of God. Praise the Lord. That's why I say study. Study to show, to do what? To show yourself approved. That's why I say that this book of the Lord must not depart from your mouth. Then locate that particular place that address that situation and apply it. Praise the Lord. And as you apply it constantly, consistently, praise the Lord, you get results. But most of the time, we're always in a hurry. We want it now. We want to just, it doesn't happen like that. You know how long you have been in that situation. You know how long you have lingered in disobedience and all kind of rascality and all that. And then you want change suddenly. No, you must go through the process. Praise the Lord. As you constantly apply the word of God, something begins to happen in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we need to do more in the area of the word of God. Let's take time to study the word of God. Let's take time to apply the word of God in our lives in every situation because the word of God is all purpose cure. Praise the Lord. In Yoruba language, in the Yoruba language, it's, it's one, Yoruba is one of African tribe. Praise the Lord. They call it Bobo Nishé. Praise the Lord. That means all purpose cure. If a human being can just manufacture one drug and say, and this, this medicine can cure all this, it can cure headache, can cure this. No, but it's the word of God. It's only the word of God that is all purpose cure. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. And it's the word of God, it does not have side effects. Praise the Lord. You cannot take too much of it. Praise the Lord. In fact, the more, the better. Tell your neighbor, the more, the better. The, more, the, better. the word of God has no side effects. So the more you can take, the better you will be. Praise the Lord. That is what is making the difference. Praise the Lord. That is what is making what? The difference. The same Holy Spirit that is in that of our pastor is the same Holy Spirit that is in you. If only you will, you will, you will apply yourself to the study of the word. Praise the Lord. The difference between him and us is because he takes his time to study. And when he comes here, when he speaks, you say, wow, this why? It's not magic. It's not what? Magic. It's a product of diligent studying of the word of God. And God is, God does not discriminate. Praise the Lord. He will not say because you are born again today, you cannot be as the other. No! If only you apply yourself to the word of God, something will happen. Praise the Lord. I don't know how much time I have left, but my, my time is, uh, praise the Lord. Our God is good. Just because of the little time that we have to wait, praise the Lord. As I bring this to a close, amen. amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. One other that there is no more time, but one other that we need to talk is our area of giving and our commitment to the things of God. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that whatever we have, we have gotten is God that has given it to us. Praise the Lord. There is nothing that we have that is not given to us. So why, why is it a struggle to give part of what God has given to us back to him? Why is it a struggle? Praise the Lord. Everything that we have is given to us by God. Why is it not difficult for us to give part of it to finance his kingdom? It should not be so. Praise the Lord. Amen. So one thing that we need to do is that let us, let us deliberately give to the things of God finance the cost of God. Praise the Lord. The, the people that they, know, they don't know God, they finance their own causes. They do so many things. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Somebody tells us that when it comes to the issue of money, praise the Lord, the question that we should ask ourselves is not how much should I give to God, but the right question should be how much of God's money should I spend on myself? Praise the Lord. Because the truth is that everything we have is given to us by God. As I bring it to a close, every, let me tell you also that in summary, whenever God asks us to do something, praise the Lord. Whenever God places a demand on us, either for us to love him more, or for us to, to apply his word more, for us to give, it's a setup for either our rising or for our falling. Praise the Lord. Anytime we obey God, we rise. When we, listen, when we live in disobedience, we fall. My prayer today is that as you hear the word of God, you will apply it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as you apply the word of God, God will set you higher in the name of Jesus. Amen.